you're a Christian, admit this makes no sense if you are sincere. He is God's son, the so, son of God. So what do you mean by the son? Okay, I mean, I have three children, right? I have two sons. Yes. I mean, I know that son, my son is different than me. It is. So do you mean son, figure of speech? Do you say son in a literal way? I, I literally, the son of God. Son of God means how? How yes. is somebody a son? Like from the human mind point of view, a son of God is, means God begets a son. Yes, well, we... What comes to your mind when you say God has a literal son? What does it mean? That he is uh, divine. Who is divine? God what? or the son? Well, God is divine. Okay, God, that's easy. That's yes, understood. That's right. Fine, yeah. And then, but because he is, because Jesus is his son, he has the attributes of the Father, of God the Father, and and that he also came to earth as a mortal man because he was born of Mary. But we believe that he was conceived through the Spirit and that he is God's son and he's, he's um, uh, divine, if you will. I, I, I'm trying to, I don't know if I should use another word, because of God and, and human because of Mary. But they, they work hand in hand, God the Father and Jesus the Son. But we worship God. We, we respect Jesus. So you don't worship Jesus? We don't. We don't worship him, but we, we uh, worship God, and we, um, we, believe, of course, that a we believe that Jesus is uh, atoned for our sins, but we also believe we have to do our part too. But we believe it's through mercy that all we can do, and we still couldn't make it back mm -hmm. without his atoning sacrifice. So, 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 so can we go back to the Son of God concept? Because, you know, again, if we get the concept of God right, everything else falls into place. You know, actually, if you take the word Son of God and look into the Bible dictionary, the Eastern Bible dictionary to be exact, under the word Sons of God, the, the dictionary says that anyone who is a righteous person, a pious person, used to be called as Son of God, mm -hmm. as a figure of speech, not as a literal son, because right, even in right. the Old Testament, you can see that they have many, many sons of God. Mm -hmm. For example, David is called as the son, not just a son of God, he's called as the begotten son of God, David. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 2, verse number 7, David is called as the son of God, right? Jacob is called as the son of God. Angels are called son of God. Peacemakers are called as, you know, children of God. Do you believe yes. that you are a son of God? No, no, because... Uh, God is God. I'm a creation of God, right? I'm not a son of yes. God because that's where it becomes confusing. If we say that son and daughter, then instead of having a figure of speech way of saying it, people will start believing it in a literal way. And uh, very soon they are given uh, divine attributes and very soon then you have multiple gods. So what we say is we are creation of God, we are not sons and daughters of God because it avoids diluting the concept of God. Okay. I hope you understand, right? Yes, yeah. I, I, I understand the distinction that you're making. Yes. Even though I do believe that, yes, I'm a, I'm created. I'm, I actually believe I, we are created in God's image. Do you believe that God is would have a form like we do, uh, not flesh and bones, but mm -hmm. that he... Some form, right? Yes. So so what we believe is that there is a passage in the Quran, chapter, uh, actually it's a chapter, chapter number 112, and I will just quickly recite it for you, English translation, okay, just to make it easy. It says in that chapter 112, that say he is Allah one and only, he is eternal and he is needed by all. He begets not, nor his begotten, and there is none like unto him. So we say that God does not have a nose and two eyes and one tongue and, you know, form like this. Because if we limit God by a form, that means he would be dependent on the space and in time, and he will be dependent on the creation. Number one, what we say is that we cannot conceive God, how God is. If we say that God is like that, then God is not like that, means a physical form if you attach to God. 
Okay, okay. I was just curious. Is yes. That your, when you think of God, you know, what do you, how do you picture him, you know? And, uh, so, and I think of him as, as a father figure, if you will, and, mm -hmm. and um, of course, perfect. He's, he's, he's the only perfect person or being. Mm. I mean, it's very imperfect because we live in an, an imperfect world right. and so forth. I don't want to give you. I know you've taken a lot of time no, to talk. No, so have you didn't, did we? No, I haven't. I, I got here. I got here too late. I mean, I just got here before I came. Sure. Just to speak to so, you. So, so, so just to summarize, right? Uh, are you from here? Or do you live Chicago. here? Chicago. Okay, so you're a guest here. Okay. I'm a guest just like you, but uh, they assigned me to speak, so I came That's here to speak. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what I would suggest is Mary. Not Mary, sorry, Linda, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Mary from the Bible comes to my mind, that's but Linda, right? right? Yes. So it's important for us that we need to identify and embrace the concept of God that God has introduced through every single prophet. So when we look into the Old Testament, not a single time God said that I have a son who is also divine. Not a single time, right? See, if God has a son which is divine, it would have been mentioned in the Old Testament. Not a single time. Even in the New Testament, when Jesus mentions about himself, he never ever said that I am the divine son of God. But in a figure of speech, people called him as a son of God. It's a figure of speech, not as a begotten son. right? Because if God's son is also divine and God is also divine, you end up with two gods. <laughs> right? From a logical point of view. So to do away with this confusion, God in reintroduced through Muhammad, peace be upon him, and with the Qur'an, that who is God and who is not God? What is the guidance to follow? And what is the path to paradise? And I would really, really invite you to study Islam, study the Qur'an, pray to God, Linda, always, you know, God, guide me to the truth. I know there is a truth. There is one faith, one right faith, one right way to go to paradise. Because after we die, every single person would have to stand in front of God. And God would be asking on that day, what kind of belief that you had? What kind of life that you had led? We cannot come back again to this world. So it's important we only have one chance. God sent you in this mosque today with a sign. Meet the Muslims, ask the question, pick up a copy of the Quran, and then you will come to the right faith. And that we say is the faith of submission to God. In Arabic, it is Islam.